Hillary, haven't I always said this? I wanted a son to carry on our family name. Yet you gave birth to a girl, so I don't need someone useless like you. Sign these divorce papers and get out of the house with your daughter. Suddenly, one day, these were the words Ted blurted out at my in-law's house. In his right hand, he held the divorce papers. And on his left side, he was embracing his lover. As I was dumbfounded by such absurd demands, the lover, with a serious expression, added insult to injury. Hello, I'm Kristen. I'm pregnant with Ted's baby, and we're having a boy. We've already confirmed our baby's gender through tests, so I will make Ted happy. Please, don't interfere in our relationship, got it? It sounded as if I was the villain. Then my mother-in-law Susan delivered the final blow. I was completely deceived by you, Hillary. I feel so sorry for Ted. Please, never show your face to us again. There wasn't a single reasonable person here. How could they say such heartless words? I couldn't comprehend. While glancing at the entrance, I was utterly astounded. However, there was no trace of surprise or panic in me. What have you all been saying? I've been single for a week now. I'm no longer Ted's wife, so do as you please. Courtney and I will be leaving. Hillary, have you gone mad? When do we get divorced? The divorce is supposed to happen now. The crazy one is you, Dad. We've already moved to a new house. That's the situation, so goodbye. What are you talking about, Courtney? <laughs> You're both really stupid. Ted laughed loudly enough for it to be heard outside, pointing at us. He could laugh now, but not for much longer. He didn't know anything, but I knew everything. I will never forgive my husband. He will surely regret hurting our daughter. I calmly confronted Ted, who was still laughing. The stupid one is you, Ted. I already submitted the divorce papers. You just didn't know. People say you can't predict what a desperate person will do, and it's true. I never thought you'd spout such nonsense, but this is your true nature. I feel refreshed knowing I'm divorcing you, Hillary, who's nothing but a liar and lacks any sincerity. Ted looked down on me with disdain, and Susan and Kristen joined in. Seriously, why did I ever agree to this foolish marriage? I want to punch my past self. I've wasted my dear Ted's time, my biggest sin in life. The only salvation is that you're being discarded right now. So a loser like you better stop talking and just leave. Ted and Susan, you two are too kind to even listen to such nonsensical ramblings. I knew I was right to choose you, Ted. Such a compassionate man. Hillary, stop telling pathetic lies and get out. The way Susan and Kristen grinned with narrow eyes, like crescent moons, they looked like evil witches straight out of a fairy tale. People reveal their hearts through their actions, and to discomfort someone just by the way they laugh is a sort of talent in its own way. But where there is evil, there is also justice. Now I will be the one to judge this evil. They will all regret what they said. I displayed a video on my smartphone and confronted a trio of villains. Do you recognize this? Uh, a video. No. Camera footage? What about it? Oh, isn't that Ted's room? Why does this stupid wife have footage of Ted's room on her phone? Do they really not understand anything? For people who keep calling others stupid, they don't seem very smart themselves. Now, perhaps that's why they engage in such immoral acts like affairs and easily condone them. In a way, I was quite satisfied with my understanding, and I revealed the secret to the three. This is footage from a hidden camera. I have been monitoring Ted secretly. I installed a camera in his room. I knew about his affair, and that he had a pre-filled divorce paper already. What? There was a hidden camera in my room? That's why I secretly took the divorce papers while Ted was away and submitted them. If you think it's a lie, go check the hiding spot yourself. The drawer in the closet is empty now. Ted was still half doubting when he went to his room, but when he returned, his face was pale. It seemed he had realized what I said was true. 
Susan and Kristen also lost their smiles when they saw Ted's expression. No way. You found out about everything before we even told you. Well, I am surprised, but this works out for me. It saves me the trouble of submitting it. Kristen, let's get remarried right now. Nothing is stopping us now. Yes, when you think about it, nothing bad happened. It's just that the ties with the stupid wife were cut a bit earlier. She was a useless woman who couldn't bear a son. Ted was never suitable for her. Now, Ted can restart his life. Susan laughed loudly. I understand a parent's love for their child, but her love towards her son seemed a bit excessive. Certainly, my husband had taken over the company from his deceased father and probably earned more than the average person. I knew he had worked hard. After all, we were married. But no matter how precious her own child was, it didn't justify mistreating me like that. Throughout our marriage, the harsh words thrown at me by Susan are bitter memories I can't forget, even if I wanted to. It was truly a difficult time. My only ally was my daughter, Courtney. And even she was being disregarded by them. This was unforgivable. I am the only one who can protect my daughter. I will show them, including all the mistreatment I've endured. I pulled out a small piece of paper from the drawer and presented it to the three. Ted and his mother looked at the paper with curious faces. What's this scrap of paper? A business card? President and CEO of Holmes Trading, John Owen? Holmes Trading is one of your company's major clients, isn't it? Yeah, but why does Hillary have the business card of the CEO of such a major company? There's no way someone like her would have a chance to interact with them. The two of them spoke as they pleased. Do they really think I'm some kind of punching bag? Unfortunately for them, I'm human and sharp words do hurt. However, it seems they don't understand that. Meanwhile, Kristen seemed to have lost her words. Noticing this, Ted spoke up. Kristen, what's wrong? You look pale. Of course she would be shocked. Pulling out her father's business card all of a sudden must have startled her, right? Huh? Father? Who's her father? I couldn't help but smile as I saw Ted's confused expression. Clearly he knew nothing. Seizing the moment, I raised my voice and declared, Your mistress is the daughter of the CEO of your client company. <laughs> Ridiculous. What kind of coincidence is that? You must have finally lost it. I always thought you were rude, but to think you were such a scoundrel trying to frame people. Your parents must be ashamed for raising someone as rude as you. I was furious, especially since she insulted not just me, but my family too. Truly, some people can belittle others as simply as breathing. My daughter also puffed up her cheeks in indignation. Seeing her expression somewhat soothed me. Gaining courage from Ted and his mother's remarks, Kristen attacked me with a confident look. Ted and Susan are right. I don't care if he's the president of a big company or whatever. I've never met such a person. Don't just make up someone's family, you jerk. Exactly. I've met Mr. Owen because of my position, and she looks nothing like him. Well, I do acknowledge that Kristen has the grace and intelligence of a CEO's daughter. She's worlds apart from you. Indeed. She must have been raised by wonderful parents, unlike some worthless jerk like you. That also means Courtney's future is bleak. With a mother like you, it's a shame. Susan glared contemptuously at my daughter as she said this. Undeterred, my daughter glared back fiercely. Enraged, I slammed a document onto the table. What's this now? John Owen? Kristen Owen? Adopted? This is Mr. Owen's family registry. It certifies the identities of Mr. Owen, his wife, and their unmarried children. As it says here, Kristen is Mr. Owen's adopted daughter. That's why she doesn't look anything like Mr. Owen. What? Why do you have Mr. Owen's family registry? Because Mr. Owen and I are in a cooperative relationship. After I learned of your affair, I reached out to him. He kindly entrusted me with this information. Ted raised his voice in disbelief. This is unbelievable. He's the CEO of a major company. It's not that easy to meet him. That document must be fake. Now you've even resorted to faking documents. 
You're truly hopeless. Did you think we'd be fooled by such a fake? You're mistaken. Don't lump us together with someone as foolish as you. The foolish ones are you guys. Forgery of a document like this is a serious crime, punishable by imprisonment of one to ten years. I wouldn't commit such a crime for someone like you, Ted. If I got arrested, Courtney would suffer. Then why is this paper here? You must have prepared it just to confuse us. It seems they desperately want to deny any relationship between Mr. Owen and Kristen. Indeed, having an affair with the daughter of a major client is a disastrous scenario. People tend to shut out information that's inconvenient for them. That doesn't bother me. Whether they face it or not, their downfall is assured. If you think it's a fake, that's fine by me. I'm just letting you know the facts. My firm stance seemed to shift Ted and his mother's attitude. Their smiles disappeared and they began sweating profusely. Ted turned back to Christian. Christian, just to be sure, you haven't been deceiving me, right? Christian shook her head emphatically. Why would I lie to the man I love? Mr. Owen is a stranger. I had a child with you because I love you, Ted. I would never lie like this. I couldn't help but give Christian a round of applause. Well done, Kristen. You've shown your unwavering will. You truly love Ted, don't you? I'm moved. So I have a reward for you. Just wait a moment. With that, I briskly left the living room. The puzzled looks on their faces followed me, but I didn't care. I stepped outside and quickly brought back my reward. Sorry for the wait. Here's your reward. No, it can't be. Kristen recoiled in shock. There stood John Owen himself. He had been waiting outside the house beforehand, and he had intentionally left the front door ajar. When Ted confronted me with divorce papers earlier today, I glanced at the entrance in disdain, aware of Mr. Owen's presence. Ted straightened his back and greeted him immediately upon seeing him. Mr. Owen, it's been a while. No need for formalities. Such greetings are meaningless. Mr. Owen ignored Ted's greeting and looked at him coldly. Deep wrinkles formed between his brows and his veins popped out. I've been waiting at the front door and overheard a most interesting conversation. Ted, I've come to understand your true nature quite well. It was an enlightening experience to hear such foul language from someone like you. Ugh, well, I mean... Ted, realizing that Mr. Owen had heard everything, seemed unable to think of any excuses. He just sweated profusely and hung his head. Mr. Owen also looked at Kristen. Her shoulders jerked up. Do you not feel ashamed of what you have done? There are things one simply should not do as a human being. Marriage and love are different. Once you have vowed eternal love, you must at least fulfill the minimum responsibilities. Apologize to Hillary right away. His booming voice filled the room. Both Ted and Kristen shrank back, but Susan stood firm. If eternal love is so important, then Ted and Kristen are deeply in love as well. Hillary no longer loves Ted. After all, she was the one who filed for divorce. It's only natural for two people in love to be together. There's nothing wrong with that. Such reasoning is unbearable. Indeed, it is wonderful for two people in love to be united. But being single is a basic prerequisite for that. Moreover, there is not only Hillary, but also Courtney. To discard someone because they cannot bear a son? What era are you living in? If you live in the present, please update your mindset. This behavior is unacceptable. Finally, Eve and Susan ran out of words in the face of Mr. Owen's formidable presence. The room fell utterly silent. There was a reason for his fury. In fact, Mr. Owen's wife was infertile and unable to have children. While there are still people with outdated views like Susan and Ted, there are also many who cannot have children despite wishing to. We must not forget that pregnancy and childbirth are secret. Mr. Owen could not stand to see his family hurt by selfish desires for an heir. Both Ted and Susan were silenced by Mr. Owen's intensity, but Kristen's eyes were ablaze with anger. She stared directly at Mr. Owen and began to argue. You preach as if you were a saint, but you're just as selfish. You adopted me because you couldn't have your own children, right? Whether it was good for me or not didn't matter. It was all just the convenience of adults. Kristen was shouting with all her might, fists clenched. 
I don't know the details, but Mr. Owen was a strict man and didn't spoil Kristen with money or things. This probably made Kristen feel unloved by her adoptive father because they weren't blood-related. Ted and Susan seemed confused as the divorce drama had somehow turned into a parent-child argument. They looked at each other uneasily. Kristen, unable to control her emotions, continued to confront Mr. Owen. You just adopted me for mom's sake, right? Because she wanted a child. Because she was important to you. Being used to fulfill someone else's needs. To you, I'm just a tool. Everyone thinks I don't matter. Although I had only known Mr. Owen for a short time, I could tell he was a good person. Listening as an outsider, I thought Kristen was wrong, but Mr. Owen silently listened to her. What? Aren't you going to say anything? Or is what I'm saying not even worth responding to? That's not it. That's not it. I'm actually a bit happy. Happy? Are you crazy to be happy about being accused? Or is that some kind of hobby? It's the first time you have spoken your true feelings to me. You're always a well-behaved child who didn't cause trouble. I thought you were just a quiet child, but now I see that's not the case. You must have endured a lot. His eyes softened as he looked at her. Kristen's shoulders trembled slightly. I admit I was strict with you. I don't intend to make excuses. That was because I love you. They say the opposite of love is indifference, right? I wouldn't bother speaking up if I didn't care. Shut up! Shut up! How can I believe that now? I was never loved by my family. Kristen, that's enough. You don't understand anything. Even as an outsider, I can see that Mr. Owen cares about you. You just deny it unilaterally. Right now, you look like nothing but a child throwing a tantrum. I couldn't help but interject. As a fellow parent, I couldn't stand to listen any longer. Being a parent is more challenging than one might imagine. You can't just quit halfway. Pouring your all into your child doesn't necessarily mean you'll receive anything in return. Things you do for your child can backfire. And after lovingly raising them, eventually you have to let it go, which is an incredibly hard job. Yet parents continue out of love and responsibility for their children. It was clear that Mr. Owen possessed these qualities in abundance. However, Christian was stubborn and seemed unable to see the truth. Ha! The woman who was supposed to spend her life with a partner and got dumped shouldn't lecture me. You're just someone who can't live without clinging to a man. Everything will be taken from you, and you'll fall into misery. As Kristen turned her anger towards me, Ted and Susan, who had been quietly observing, regained their momentum. That's right. I don't know how much about Kristen's past, but what's certain is that she will be happy because she's going to remarry me. Yes, Ted is a wonderful man. You were too much of a failed woman for him. Now he can finally start a life with a woman worthy of him. I'm looking forward to it. A child's happiness is a parent's happiness, too. Though what they said wasn't wrong, coming from Susan it sounded insincere. My daughter seemed to think similarly, and was giving Susan a cold stare. Despite the villains showing no signs of remorse, I declared boldly, I don't mind. Go ahead with your remarriage or whatever. But remember, you'll be the ones regretting it. That's for sure. As Ted and Susan gulped, they arrogantly took Kristen's hand. The howling of a loser is so pathetic. Keep barking, you failure of a woman. Don't contact us anymore, please. We'll live happily as a family of four, including the baby we're expecting. Goodbye, Dad. I don't think we'll meet again. I don't plan to show you your grandchild's face, so be prepared. With those final words, the trio of villains left the house. The place was as quiet as after a storm had passed. Mr. Owen was the first to speak. Hillary, Courtney, I'm truly sorry for my daughter's rude behavior. Please, don't apologize. It's not your fault, Mr. Owen. Besides, everything will be okay. What do you mean by okay? Mr. Owen looked puzzled, but I gave him a meaningful smile. There are facts that none of you know yet. They will come to light soon enough. Both Mr. Owen and Courtney could only tilt their heads in confusion at my words. A few days later, I was waiting for a call from my husband at a certain place. It was one of the most luxurious apartments in L.A. The view is exceptional, and I quite like it. Even if the wait gets long, I don't think I'll get bored. While I was drinking my second cup of coffee, the long-awaited call finally came. I answered with an unusually cheerful voice 
only to hear my husband's voice sounding very frantic. What's the matter, calling all of a sudden? It's only been a few days since you cut ties with me so decisively. Hillary, help me. Kristen has gone missing. Oh, really? That sounds serious. But then, shouldn't you report this to the police? I'm not in the business of finding people, you know. It's not just that she's missing, Hillary. My bank book and credit cards are gone, too. She had asked for the pins before, saying we should share important info in case of emergencies. And now money is being withdrawn like crazy. I don't know what to do. I couldn't help but laugh out loud as my husband's story became increasingly disjointed. He kept ranting about something unclear during my laughter. He seemed utterly delirious. After having my laugh, I finally decided to tell him the truth. Listen, Kristen isn't just your woman. She has another main guy. What are you saying all of a sudden? I'm really struggling here. Don't confuse me further. It's the truth. And by the way, the baby in Kristen's belly isn't yours either. <gasps> That's a lie. It has to be a lie. You're just mean, giving me wrong information and laughing at my confusion from afar. You're the worst. I've completely misjudged you. My husband became so upset he started crying. It seems the escape into love turned sour in just a few days. I wonder if his mother is worried. Of course, for me, it's just desserts. I'll show you proof that what I'm saying is true. Here's a question for you. Where do you think I am right now? I don't care. Go to hell for all I care. That's quite a thing to say. But you know, the one who's going to hell is not me. Anyway, the answer is right here. I switched to video call to show him the surroundings. Immediately, a scream came through the phone. Kristen, why are you with Hillary? Were you two plotting against me? Kristen remained silent, head bowed. It makes sense. I now hold leverage over Kristen. Ted, it's not just Kristen here. Let me introduce you. This is Brian, Kristen's real boyfriend. As I introduced him, Brian appeared on the screen. Yes, I had already made contact with Kristen's actual boyfriend. And now we were raiding Kristen's house together. Screams louder than before could be heard through the screen. You bastard. How dare you seduce my Kristen? You have my bank book and credit cards, don't you? Return them now, along with the money you took. I must say, I didn't know anything about your existence, nor about any bank book or credit cards. I need an explanation just as quickly as you do, Kristen. Brian glared sharply at Kristen. Kristen looked even more downcast. Kristen? What's going on? Who is this man? He can't be your real boyfriend, right? We loved each other so much. Tell me the truth. Ugh, annoying. What? I didn't catch that. Shut up, you delusional fool. What do you mean we loved each other? I never loved you, not even once. It was all your wishful thinking. I was just with you for the money. And to think you got tricked by another woman so easily, you're useless. Kristen's outburst left my husband speechless, his mouth agape. After a long pause, he suddenly slumped over the table and began to cry loudly. <laughs> he cried out like a wild animal, inconsolable and beyond the reach of conversation. Meanwhile, Brian continued to confront Kristen, who responded combatively. I felt the urge to go home and relax over tea with Courtney. However, I couldn't just abandon the task at hand. With no more need for Brian and Kristen, I quietly left my seat and moved to the hallway. I'll just have to patiently wait for my husband to recover. After a good cry, he finally lifted his swollen face, ready to wrap things up, and then he made a surprising suggestion. Let's start over, Hillary. We can still go back to how things were. What? What are you talking about? It must be financially tough to take care of Courtney alone, right? Besides, it's better for a family to be together. I'm sure mom would understand. Now he brings up family as if it suits his convenience. What should be a warm word has become hateful because of him. I scoffed at him with all the contempt I could muster. <sighs> no way. Do you have any idea how much you've made me suffer? And it's not just about me. What makes me angriest is how you hurt Courtney. I never thought you would neglect your own daughter after cheating. I just really wanted a son to carry on the family name. There was no other intention. And it's not too late. If we get back together and love each other, we can have an heir soon enough. Please, don't say something so distasteful. 
I have no love left for you, not even a little bit. I can't stand to even breathe the same air as you, let alone touch you. You keep talking about an air, but we don't need one anymore, do we? What do you mean? Your foolish actions are now known to your company and clients. They're already seen as problematic, and it won't be long before existing deals are canceled. Soon, you'll struggle with cash flow, and running the company will become difficult. If the company falls apart, what use is an heir? No way. After that, Ted fell silent, looking stunned. I finally pushed him away with all the sarcasm I could muster. Your remaining family is just your mother. Try to get along with her. I pressed the end call button and left Kristen's house. That was the last time I saw my husband. The sky seemed exceptionally clear today. Afterward, Ted was abandoned by his colleagues and clients alike. Naturally, his company faced financial difficulties and quickly shut down. As money became tight, the once close-knit parent-child relationship soured, and now they are constantly arguing. Rumors about Ted have spread in the industry, leaving him with no prospects for a re-employment. His mother has never worked a day in her life and now sits at home complaining without trying to find a job. Ted is scraping by with day jobs, but his standard of living continues to decline. Both he and his mother are on a path to a difficult life, looking and feeling worse for wear. Seeing children as merely tools, their fate seems fitting. Meanwhile, Kristen does give birth, but ultimately breaks up with Brian, her true love. He was probably a decent man. It's normal to want to avoid drama if you suddenly find out your partner was cheating and stealing. Though it's someone else's business, I truly wish him happiness. After splitting from Brian, Kristen, who has never worked a day in her life, has no choice but to return to her father, John Owen. However, John Owen, being strict both with himself and others, does not coddle her, and instead pushes her away. Of course, this is not to say he has abandoned her. Mr. Owen loves Christian and wants her to acknowledge her mistakes and live an honest life because of his love. I too owe a lot to Mr. Owen. I can only hope that his intentions reach her. As for me, I am now living peacefully with my daughter. Our life isn't wealthy, but it's truly comfortable without the fear of living with toxic family members. I want to give my daughter all the attention I couldn't before. Years later, I remarried and was blessed with a son. Looking at this little child, I am reminded that there are people who want to have children but can't, and that pregnancy and childbirth are sacred things that should never be taken for granted. I must never forget this. Moving forward, I vow to cherish the miracle of my children's births and to find happiness with my new family.